Today, I'm presenting work on adaptation and information search and decision making under time pressure. This is Anita Crescenzi from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And this work was done with my co-authors, Rob Capra, Bogum Choi, and Yuan Lee. Previous studies have found adaptation in time-constrained exploratory search in the form of searching faster or selecting different information. Nearly all of these studies have included time constraints as well as scenarios or tasks that set explicit or implicit expectations of the amount of search effort needed, such as finding a specific number of articles, searching for a specific amount of time, or exploring a topic thoroughly. But in real life, search is usually done as part of a broader task, and searchers rarely know in advance how many articles are needed or how much time to spend. In this study, we wanted to see if we would find similar adaptations if we investigated both search and the broader work task under time pressure. This work extends prior studies in several ways. We looked at search and decision-making, specifically recommendation decisions in which participants were asked to identify options and recommend the best one. This allowed us to look for adaptation in search and decision-making. Participants could also decide how much search effort, of, if any, was needed. And finally, in addition to inducing time pressure through time limits, we sought to minimize time pressure resulting from a combination of a session level time limit in the form of the duration of an experimental session and a fixed number of tasks to complete. Specifically, we investigated three research questions looking at adaptation in search and decision-making when setting task goals only at the work task level. What is the impact of time limits on search and decision-making behavior, on the decisions that were made, and on time, search, and decision-related perceptions? To do this, we ran a lab-based experimental study with 48 participants recruited from our university. They consisted of staff, faculty, and students and ranged in age from 19 to 71 years with an average age of about 33 years. Our institutional review board approved the study protocol, which included deception by omission. In all study materials, we told participants that they would be making a series of recommendation decisions and they would have access to a search system, but participants were not told that we were studying adaptation under time pressure. At the end of the session, we held a debrief to inform participants of the true purpose of the study. Time constraint was a between subjects factor. Half of the participants were given a five minute task time limit and the other half were given no time guidance. Participants completed up to six tasks. These tasks were created and evaluated in a preliminary study and the five minute time limit in this study is based on the mean time it took in the preliminary study for participants to complete the tasks without any time guidance. We collected data through system logs, eye tracking, questionnaires, and an interview. For their one and a half hour experimental sessions, we paid participants $30 in cash. Each study session started with participants being welcome to the lab, receiving study instructions, and reviewing and signing a consent form. This is also where the eye tracker was calibrated. Then the moderator walked participants through a demo task so they could see what to expect and the moderator left the study room. Then participants completed up to six decision tasks. Each task started with a pre-task questionnaire which included the task description and time instructions if it was completed in the time limit condition. Then participants completed the decision task. If they spent more than five minutes on the task and they were in the time constraint condition, they received a timeout notification. At the end of each task, participants completed a post-task questionnaire. After the tasks were finished, there was also a decision and exit questionnaire and an interview about their perceptions of the quality of their decision. A debriefing interview was conducted at the end to tell participants about the true purpose of the study. The experiment system showed here walked participants through the study components. At the top, it contained the scenario, which told them that a friend of theirs was moving out of state and asked them for help with some of the big decisions that they needed to make. The system determined whether or not to display a task 
based on how much time remained in the experimental session. Another task was displayed as long as there were at least 35 minutes left in the session to allow time for additional questionnaires in an interview. This was also done to avoid inducing time pressure due to a session time limit and a fixed number of tasks. If participants saw that there were six tasks to complete in a one and a half hour study, they might decide to limit the amount of time for each task as a result. Here you see the instructions for one of the tasks. At the top is the same scenario. The next component is the topic of the task. The topic shown in the screenshot here is that their friend is looking for short-term housing near the university. The last component of the task instructions was the decision instructions, which was the same for all topics. Participants were asked to identify their friend's options, recommend the best, and provide a justification. In addition, in the study instructions and demo task, the moderator told participants that they could search for information or make their recommendations without searching. And if the participant was in the time limit condition, the task description also included a line saying that they had up to five minutes to complete the task. If they were still working on the task after five minutes, they received the timeout notice when they returned to the CERT. In either condition, if the participant wanted to search for more information, they could click on the search for information button and a search system displayed under the task description. This screenshot shows how it looks with search results. If we zoom out to only see the search part of this page, you can see that the search results were formatted to look like a standard search engine with 10 results per page. The search system used the Bing API and logged all interactions with the system. To answer our research questions, our analysis focused on differences between the time limit and no time limit conditions and the dependent variables. We used marginal effects estimated after multi-level mixed effects models using a random intercept for the participant since we had repeated measurements. To determine if differences between the time limit conditions overall was significant, we used average marginal effects. And to determine if the difference between time limit conditions differed based on the values of another dependent variable, such as the speed at which the decision was made, we used marginal effects at representative values. Now our results. For the first research question, looking at the impact of time limits on search and decision behaviors, we found that 95% of all decision tasks involved search. And the decisions made were significantly faster if made under a time limit, about three minutes versus five minutes with no limit. We also categorized decisions as a fast or slow decision using a median split. The median time in both conditions was just under three minutes, which also corresponded to the mean time in the time limit condition. As far as differences in search behaviors between time conditions, we found no significant differences. On average, participants issued two queries, they hovered their mouse down to the fifth result and clicked as deep as the fourth result. They spent about 13 minutes total on the SERP, hovering over results about 22 times, and viewed a total of three pages off the SERP. For our second research question, looking at the impact of time limit on decisions made, we used content analysis on the text of responses to four open-ended questions on the post-task questionnaire. These questions asked participants which option they recommended and why, whether they considered any other options, and what information they used to make their decision of what to recommend. Specifically, we coded the responses for the quality and quantity of recommendations. For the quality of recommendations, we coded the specificity or the extent to which a specific option was recommended, the accuracy or the extent to which the recommendation was in line with what the task asked. And we also coded recommendations for the strength of the justification, as well as the clarity and length of the recommendation. We also looked at the quantity of information they included in their responses, including the number of options they recommended or said they considered recommending and the number of attributes on which they described the options. I'll summarize these results focusing on specificity and accuracy. 
Overall, we found no differences in the specificity of recommendations between time limit conditions. Recommendations were most frequently for a specific and unambiguous option, like rent a studio apartment at a specific apartment complex that has short-term leases, or for a general approach for how to make the decision, like contact a realtor. Looking at fast versus slow decisions for tasks with no time limit, we see that same pattern. However, there is a difference in specificity for fast versus slow tasks completed under a time limit. Fast decisions were more likely to be recommendations for a general approach like contact a realtor, and slow decisions were more likely to be specific like rent a studio apartment at an apartment complex that allows short-term leases. Here we can see that this adaptation we found of making less specific recommendations is a function of both the time limit and the decision speed. Looking at recommendation accuracy, most of the recommendations made were in line with what was requested, although it is interesting that some were intentionally different, such as a recommendation to find a place for a year so that their friend wouldn't have to move again. So to recap what we have so far about the decisions made, recommendations were less specific if made fast versus slow within a time limit, and we found no differences in accuracy. We also found no differences in the justification strength or clarity, but recommendations were about 18 words shorter if made with a time limit, regardless of the decision speed, and they were about 10 words shorter if they were made fast, regardless of the time limit condition. There was no difference in the number of options recommended. Most tasks had one recommended option in both time limit conditions and all decision speeds. <clears throat> However, fewer options were considered for fast decisions regardless of time condition and fewer attributes of options like price were mentioned for tasks with a time limit. For research question three, looking at the impact of time limits on post-task perceptions, we found that time-limited participants felt greater time pressure and that they had to work at a faster pace. They also felt lower perceived time adequacy and lower decision confidence, but we found no significant difference in perceived search difficulty for tasks completed with a time limit versus without. And we found no significant differences between fast and slow tasks overall or within either time condition. So to summarize this study, we ran a user study designed to examine possible adaptation in both search and decision-making under time pressure. We asked participants to make a series of recommendation decisions with or without a five-minute time limit, and we set a work task goal of recommending the best option rather than a search task goal. We found different types of adaptation in search and decision-making under time pressure than in previous studies of time-limited search. In fact, there were no differences in search behaviors or perceptions of task difficulty. All of the adaptations we found in time-limited task performance were at the work task level. With the time limit, recommendations were less specific if made fast, they were shorter and contained fewer attributes describing the options. In time-limited participants felt more time pressure and lower decision confidence. Altogether, we found that the time limit manipulation induced an affective response in the form of felt time pressure and resulted in differences in the recommendation decisions. But unlike in previous studies, we did not find any differences in search behaviors or perceived search difficulty. The results of this study suggest that there are multiple mechanisms used to adapt task performance under time pressure and that the type of adaptation is specific to the situational constraints. A second takeaway is methodological. When designing a user study with time constraints or other elements that might induce time pressure, task goals at both the work task and search task levels may be needed. Otherwise, as we investigated in this study, observed variability in task performance may be due to adaptation at one or both of the levels. Thank you for listening to the entire talk. We also thank our study participants, the UNC Institutional Review Board, our reviewers, and Anita's dissertation committee.